Now, that could be good news for anyone hoping to turn back time. Scientists say they have discovered the gene for grey hair. The research could pave the way for treatments to stop uh, many of us going grey. Dr Korsu Badikari from University College London is the lead author of the report, joins us now from our central London studio. Doctor, very good day to you. What have you discovered? We have discovered a gene called IRF4, which is associated in our study with hair gray. We previously saw this gene to be associated with hair color as well. And you know that hair color is called by a natural pigment called melanin, which is present in our skin, hair and eyes. And a particular variant of this gene, which is present in around 15% of Europeans, gives them a slightly higher chance of having lighter hair color, such as blonde hair, and also a higher chance of graying at a particular age. Uh, uh, why does this, this particular pigment suddenly uh, reduce in quantity, or does it just stop being produced altogether? How does that work? Uh, this particular gene, uh, we don't know the entire action of it on the way pigment is produced in our hair follicles, but is involved in uh, several other genes. So, of course, this is not the only gene that's involved in this process, but we need to study more on how this gene regulates pigment production in our hair follicles. Yeah, I mean, it's a big study that we're talking about here and from a fairly wide range of parts of the world. Was it 6,000 people? Uh, it was more than 6,000 people in five countries of Latin America, Mexico, Brazil, Peru, Chile and Colombia. Yeah. Uh, the, the people say sometimes it is possible to go grey overnight, uh, don't they? I mean, how, how sudden a switching off, if you like, of that pigment production uh, might this gene be responsible for in some circumstances? We haven't studied that specifically, but uh, we have to remember that uh, hair graying is indeed shutting off of pigment production in hair follicles, but that happens generally slowly uh, throughout our scalp at different parts of time. Uh, so we haven't really studied specifically that sudden hair graying, yeah. but we have studied as hair graying proportion changes on your scalp as you age, for example. Uh, and, Doctor, the question I'm sure you're sick and tired of being asked, but it is the one people inevitably think of, is to what extent any kind of genetic manipulation might be used to switch this gene off or modify this gene's uh, application in some way such that you stop people going grey. I mean, you, you do the, the hair dyeing business out of billions of pounds globally if you were to do this. So we don't think that it would be absolutely necessary for doing genetic manipulations. What is probably easier to do is, as we understand in more detail how different genes come together in controlling the pigmentation production system, and there might be proteins or enzymes in this procedure that are much easier to target with drugs, and if you try to up or down regulate them, you would be able to control your melanin production much easier than doing any specific genetic manipulation, because as we know, each of these genes work as a different gear of this huge uh, system. So targeting any particular gene won't give you a huge gain, but targeting proteins or enzymes that control the system might give you a more direct and more accessible target for drugs. Kosu Badikari from UCL, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Would you have avoided going grey if you could have done? No, I don't understand. I, I struggle a little bit with the whole diet. I mean, you know, there are plenty of people in here who take a different view from me. Not you, I hasten no, to add. You're just grateful you've still got hair, aren't you? <laughs> There's the rub. Mm.